10 years ago, I uh, went to Highland. It was a very wonderful trip. I also added this to shirt I bought there uh, and because, and I love the beer of there and the people of there. I really enjoyed it so much. I did a, I did a road trip. I, I drove on the left side, uh, coast to coast to Ireland. But we're not here to talk about this. Uh, we are here because we have uh, Niall, right? Niall? Niall, Niall, Niall. Okay. I, I, you okay? I messed, I messed this up, I messed this up. <laughs> even if you know me sometimes, but okay. Uh, how are you? It's early morning. Very good. I'm surprised you uh, kept the Guinness shirt because most people, after they go drinking in Ireland, lose all their possessions rather than actually come back with extra. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was many, many years ago. Yeah, uh, and so uh, I'd like to talk a, a little bit about your road to development. Who are you? What What do you do? How you became a developer? This is something that I'm really interested also to hear from. You. Yeah, uh, I have. I suppose slightly unorthodox uh, in a sense. I'm sure, like plenty self-taught engineers, really at this stage. So I did most of a year of computer science when I was 18 years old, but I spent most of the time drinking. <laughs> Surprise. No, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, yeah. so no, but, yeah. no, no, uh, absolutely. So I, I didn't actually stick with it, um, but that's kind of when I had some curiosity about, say, web development, things like that. And I actually, after I finished that year of college, I had applied to a couple of places to make websites. And I had only ever done things like in HTML tables. And I went and I got a job working on a Drupal site. And that scared me away from web development for a few years. <laughs> so um, I actually went into the, the wine industry. And I was selling fine wines. And uh, I was the resident whiskey and craft beer expert for, uh, for this company. And I was doing a lot of corporate events, wine tastings, and things like that. Uh, and then I had kind of a run-in with my health uh, where I had rheumatoid arthritis and I started to not be able to walk. And literally, it was, I couldn't stand with my, uh, on one of my feet. So I had to think of a way that I could make money and pay for my, I suppose, health costs to get better physicians and everything else to try and get better. And I literally started Googling easiest way to make money without a degree. <laughs> so I literally, that's all I did. Typed in. I and when web development came up, I was like, yeah, I, I, I guess I can give this another go. So, I love this. <laughs> yeah. So literally, that's a, I was like top 10 ways to make money. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like um, it, I had yeah. a calling or anything. Yeah, and the funny book is not out yet, so you had to, to search for that for yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, had, I didn't know any web developers. It wasn't like I had anyone around me who said this was a good idea. I just Googled it, and I trusted probably that first page on Google that said, yeah, you can get a job without uh, a degree. And uh, yeah, I started teaching myself between customers uh, when like customers would come in and Long story short, to get break my break into it, what happened was I was running a beer club at the time, so we do a beer tasting, and I, a couple of my customers became clients. So I built some websites for them, and then I had some experience to go and get a job. So, so, so yes. Yeah. So you made money drinking beer. This is the dream for everybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was it was pretty fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> I still stay in touch with a lot of the people from that beer club and things because it was a really it was a really good thing to do. And I used to actually go to a lot of events and parties and uh, you know teach about beer and things. It's oh. awful for your health because <laughs> I'm a I'm a very practical teacher, which means I drink a lot while I'm teaching about <laughs> drinking. <laughs> I want to be your, I want to be your student now. <laughs> yeah. So well, it was never. Uh, yeah, you can see why it took a a big toll on my health as well. Uh, so it was probably good for both financial reasons and my health in the end to swap off and go somewhere different. Yeah, no, this is really a great story to hear because uh, you transform us. You maybe something that you liked a lot, and, and you you managed to take out take out money from that because it was not uh, not that easy. I think yeah. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is really, really good to hear. I, I didn't know that because we didn't talk about your personal experience. So I'm also doing this, this sort of videos or stuff so it's also for me because I'm curious about uh, all of you, about you. So yeah, this, is, uh, this was really amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it, it's been a, it definitely an interesting journey, uh, yeah. for sure. Uh, it's been baptism by fire, uh, because I'm kind of, I'm in the industry now, I'd say coming up seven years uh, now. It's coming, yeah, it's getting there. I think it's six or seven years. It feels like longer because of the amount of clients I've had and the amount of companies worked with. Uh, but I, I'm sure we can talk about that in a few minutes as well. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, so what do you think about... Uh, the difference between contracting and permanent roles. What do you think about that? Yeah, contracting, permanent roles, there is, from the outside, I think a lot of people often think security versus like cowboy land, in a sense, mm -hmm. where yeah. I, I see a lot of people see contracting as uh, money, but you can be dumped at any time sort of uh, game. So the trade-off for most people, for I suppose anyone that's listening and hasn't, is, isn't aware of the question even, I guess, the difference between contract and permanent is you're not a permanent employee for the company. You are given, say, a daily rate or a weekly contract to perform a task for X amount of months. And <laughs> for me, that's what I aimed for very early on was to become a contractor because I had no responsibilities and it was kind of a good time to take a gamble and see was contracting for me. Yeah. What I've been surprised about is contracting has uh, been fantastic because it wasn't as volatile uh, as I thought. Most times when you see contractors or talk to contractors, they've been in companies for years and doing their <laughs> same thing. and it's only if a company really hits a hard time that I've seen contractors cut at all. But yeah, I think that's the, the main difference would be the, the legal <laughs> stuff that goes with your contract. Uh -huh. You're definitely easier to get rid of as a contractor. <laughs> nice, nice, nice to hear that, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not over there, but right. <laughs> it's not me over there. It's not me over there. No, no, no. <laughs> it's uh, seven a.m. here. I better not. <laughs> After my pep talk about being healthier, it's just yeah. Irish coffee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. yeah, I love that in Ireland. Yeah, and, and uh, this is uh, water on vodka. I let you guess what the is it. <laughs> uh, well, it's okay. I'm guessing it's water. You wouldn't uh, ruin your wine like that. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and so yeah, uh, yeah. Also, I I seen that the, um, I, I'm, I'd like to tell you that I love your YouTube channel. I, mean, I love the the colors of that. Uh, I really love the introduction. The introduction, the introduction of short uh, part. Uh, yeah, it's over there, and uh, its name it's Kodu, right? Yeah, yeah. Kodu, yeah. So yeah. Kodu is the what business I. Mm -hmm. built for contracting, believe it or not, as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you start contracting, you need to have a business. Um, I think that's another big problem that people, I, I think, scare a lot of people off contracting is uh, you can do it through umbrella companies, but I decided I want to have more control on my taxes and things. So I started my own business called Kodu, and that's where it spawned from. Um, so yeah, Kodu is Irish for coding, and I was super happy to get a four-letter domain name as well, which really helps because I think if you look on GoDaddy or anywhere for that, there are thousands to get one of those now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's it, it, it's something I've always been like doing is building a brand rather than a person because I think especially when you're building businesses, people trust a brand or a company more than this guy who can do this thing. So mm -hmm. by yeah. saying to people, I have more resources, which I do now um, because it's evolved over the years, uh, by saying you are a company rather than just a person, I think you can get a lot more respect and it's easier to get clients and things than just saying I'm Joe Bloggs from wherever. Yeah, I, I don't know because I've seen both of uh 
of uh, both of them. For example, for me now, there's my name in my YouTube channel. I don't have a, really a, a personal brand, a company brand. I'm thinking about that because yeah, sometimes if you, I think that you did this right, that uh, it, by putting maybe some name that is not yours, I don't know if it's better. For someone, it's better to use their personal name, but someone is using the, the there's no real, uh, real uh, answer to this, I think. But in your case, I think that this uh, works pretty well. And I don't know when you did you started your YouTube channel because I'm really interested in that because I just started like two months ago. So I, I really am interested in to... I put up, yeah, I put up my first video, I think two weeks before COVID hit. So uh, it was good timing. I had actually, so Kodu community came from, I do a meetup here locally um, called the Kodu community. So that's where it's expanded from. I've been doing that for a year and a half now. And the way it worked was I used to teach a two hour workshop in person um, in a WeWork building close here and we'd have free beer and pizza uh, sponsored by a, a company. And then, yeah, we'd, we'd just learn about something. So it was a very hands-on practical experience with anywhere between 10 and 20 people uh, once a month. And then I decided I should start recording these things. Lucky enough, I got the equipment and started recording it literally two weeks before COVID hit. So I was able to keep the meetup going online then. And that's why you see so many two-hour workshops on the YouTube channel now, because I still wanted to keep that format because people liked it. A lot of people have, um, especially when you go to tech talks, you'll have the 20, 30-minute talks where you don't really, you get an idea of a subject but you never learn something new. You don't have something practical you're leaving with. So I wanted to go against that where it's still short enough that you haven't lost a day uh, and not heavy duty enough that you can't do it after work. <laughs> um, but then you still actually leave with new skills by the end of it. No, no, I, and I love the idea that you record this and you put uh, them online because if someone is honestly interested in that, I think the, they could also learn from that. So I love this idea to record what, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. And I'd like, I'd like also to make maybe something like that. Uh, I don't know, maybe in the future I'll try some little live stream uh, because I think that there you, you show something, people are get really interested into that. Uh, what you did with uh, other people, I think that, uh, it's really, it's good that you, record that uh, and then you put on your on the channel it's a great idea yeah yeah so and, like, uh, bef be before we uh before that i didn't really have an online presence i guess all that much uh dublin's obviously a small city so it's very easy here to be known when you're on meetup because there's only four or five big tech meetups and so it was fine. Like I, I was known through the tech community here, but not online. So it was only as a result of then and how I met yourself even was when COVID hit, I was started going, well, I need to tell people online now. And I started tweeting and things. I think if you, I think I had like 200 followers on Twitter uh, around the same period then as well. And yeah, it's been rapid growth and it's been very fun for me to learn a new way to try and teach more people and also get guests and hopefully people like yourself will come on soon. And, you know, it's, it's just nice to be able to now pluck up talent from different countries and get a different perspective because before it was all so hands-on, I was limited to Dublin. And as we know, this is a global community. People are doing this all over the world. So it's way nicer now to be able to just get on a call like this with you and exactly. learn. You know, exactly. We are talking about what we are doing now, but this is this is also uh, if you we have met in real life, I will talk about this because uh, I'm also doing this to know new people in maybe in a different way because my fingers are tired of typing, of chatting all day long, <laughs> so I want to yeah. make them relax and use them, them only for coding, which is, is quite, an, it's quite enough <laughs> still, but yeah, so I think the. And do you like this is kind of videos, uh, what, I'm, what we are doing now? Because uh, 
I mean, I'd like to know this because uh, I'd like I I think that I've improved a bit maybe from the first one. <laughs> the camera is different, but it's not really about that. That's just uh, for fun. But uh, yeah, what do you say? It's really important. I think that you you do this. You know different people from different countries, uh, and maybe I'll say something about that in the future because I'm planning something. Uh, that it's it's really I'm, I'm not uh, gonna reveal now, but I'll do it in, in the future. Yeah, and I think that, uh, yeah to hear about uh, different perspectives, uh, you you learn a lot because uh, yeah, uh, and also getting out of your comfort zone. So um, try to know some someone else. Uh, it's also important. If you just stay in your little town and you, and you know all the, the same people, it, it's very good. It's very good because uh, maybe you know very well them. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. But maybe sometimes we should also expand our opportunities because knowing a lot of people uh, and which all has, which have the same interests, I think it, it's, uh, it, it opens, up, opens up to a lot of opportunities, opportunities. I'd love to do something with you because now I've seen uh, other, you have, have many good collaborations in your channel. I don't know if we, we can do some, something useful, but uh, yeah. So I love your idea to connect with different people from different countries and then, then we'll see. I, I don't plan so much. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and yeah, and another question: You do, you, do you plan something for the future? Do you plan uh, over one year, two year, your life, or you do or not? Yeah, so I'm in a period now where uh, definitely my career is growing uh, more than it has ever before. Really, um, I've started uh, investing in some startups and. I've I'm helping advising some startups and also took my first CTO role recently. Um, so it's there's definitely a lot going on uh, for career wise, and I'm hoping that 2021 will, other than COVID, be a much better year. <laughs> so was, I've I've yeah. high hopes for myself yeah, for the let, next year. Yeah, let me tell you that I was so optimistic about this 2020. Now I am a little a little <laughs> less <laughs> optimistic, but still, so I, was I. But still I am. Yeah, I, still, I think that we will remember this year in the future, maybe also in 10 years, 20 years, because it's been so strange. But I think that uh, even if these uh, um, hard periods, we can learn something new. For example, I, I define this, this my define, definitively I define this my social year because I was not so, the, so, that social before. I don't know if quarantine helps, helps, helps the, this because uh, I stayed two months. Totally agree. I lockdown, totally agree. I did the exact and, uh, same thing. I, yeah. I had no, like, as I said, I wouldn't have been speaking to you now if it wasn't for uh, quarantine because I wouldn't have had the time to be on Twitter. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, we had to find new ways to talk to each yeah. other yeah. and meet people and network and just be human. Yeah. Uh, and it's been difficult, but it's also the silver lining is meeting people I would have never, ever, ever met before. Um, yes. So, as I said, being so hands on um, and being able to have to step away and rethink how we do things on a daily basis is empowering in one way. Obviously, it's soul destroying to be stuck and lockdown or anything else, but you yeah. can use it as uh, a place for reflection and learning exactly. and, me and somehow networking, which I didn't think was possible, you know, that I become yeah. more social through yeah. not being able to go talk to people. Yes, yeah. Yeah, for example, and this opens up to a lot of opportunities. For example, I've taught in a Google developer group uh, uh, meetup in Memphis. <laughs> I, I, I could actually do this because we are in, in lockdown, we can do this in real life, otherwise it will be really hard to participate over there with Danny. So, it would have been a big flight, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would have done this uh, really, it would have been really a problem, but uh, I don't know if they would uh, invited me <laughs> from here. So yeah, this opens up to new opportunities because yeah, bad things uh, happen continuously in our lives. So this has been really a, a very strange one, but uh, yeah. Mm, yeah, I, I'm happy. I'm I'm happy that for, for myself that I, I've used this time 
I did the like I had like uh, three hours of commitment uh, each day, like 100 kilometers. So uh, that time was uh, used to networking to on Twitter and other stuff. So yeah, this changed a bit my 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 daily routine because uh, because before I was just uh, waking up very early in the morning, taking my car very early, and yes, so. There was a lot of commitment yeah. and uh, yeah, instead... Uh, I, I, think... I had a very similar, because I used to hmm. commute. I live in the city now. I actually moved during uh, COVID uh, into the city, funny enough, to the time I didn't need to. Um, I wanted more space. I wanted to, to have an office and things for myself as well to you know, be able to make noise at whatever time as well. Mm-hmm. And the, yeah, it's, it, having, not having to commute, uh, I'm definitely getting through less audiobooks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, less things like yeah. less work related stuff so i am trying to run that back into my schedule now of going for a walk at lunchtime and listening to some of my audiobooks and then maybe a walk in the evening as well but uh, yeah. yeah it is about creating new schedules that don't take away the good stuff because i know it's really hard to say commuting was ever positive <laughs> because i don't want to do it again <laughs> um but if you're missing some of the things like the work you got done or the socializing or uh, yeah, even for me, the audiobooks and things, it's important to kind of keep up those nice things as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I love to, to walk, to run. And meanwhile, I like to also, in the, well, if I run, it's a bit hard. But for example, if I take uh, even long walks, like 10 kilometers or even more, I, like, I love to now to socialize, to maybe say, stay on Twitter, say, and uh, try to to um, talk with people while I'm working. So I'm doing uh, this sort of stuff. I did the one. Are did memes the... counted as conversation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was really into memes during quarantine. Uh, yeah. Maybe you noticed. I noticed. That. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that. <laughs> I, I had to stop a bit because people just they just watched on me like a, a meme creator, and, and that's it. I promise that memes will come with strike back hard in, in, in some time, but now I'm really focused on videos like uh, from August. Uh, this is my 36 videos in two in, in three months. So it's, it's that's new. outrageous. Cause I think I have about 40 or so videos. So yeah. that's oh. an unbelievable number that you're getting up to already. Uh, I, like I said, you're getting good people on and there's good content, especially yeah. your knowledge of Docker as well and things like yeah. that are definitely yeah. something that's needed. It's a, one of those things that isn't overly saturated either on YouTube. It's difficult to get to more advanced topics yeah. on YouTube still. Yeah. We get l- loads of people can do the entry yeah. uh, level stuff. It's all yeah. about the yeah. production yeah. stuff now. And uh, I, I love my, and I love that my, introdu- my little introduction and I was really not really into videos. Maybe I could, I could do a quite better one now had more than 1,000 views that for a channel with uh, like uh, two entry, 200 subscribers, it was uh, quite a lot in the beginning. So I, I started doing this uh, with Adrian just for fun. Now it's becoming something different, something uh, because I, I discovered that I like to talk with different people a lot and also the recorder and also, and I'm doing this also to maybe to help someone which maybe has just, uh, is just getting started. We want to, know a bit more about us uh, because maybe we we tweet a lot uh, we make fun we make jokes memes uh, yeah so i like this i like this sort of stuff yeah so yeah and what to say if you want to make some collaborations uh, for docker or javascript I, i'd love to make that now because um, i feel really really um, feel more comfortable in front of my camera which i was really not before Really, really? It's it's yeah, not I'm a natural serious? thing. People people think it is until you have to do it, and then you're like, no, nobody yeah. is natural at this. This just takes practice yeah, and practice. a little bit of letting your ego die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it exactly. is going to be embarrassing and just accept it. <laughs> so <laughs> I love I love what you say. You said it perfectly because it, it's exactly what I've experienced uh, for myself. Uh, yeah, uh, it's and I think that uh, making videos. Uh, and publish them on YouTube or whatever you want. It's not more like an extrovert or introvert, but it's more like that you should not care about judgments. I think that it's more about that than you can be uh, really extrovert people, but thinking, but still uh, uh, 
uh, feel the judgment of people that will come anyway. So you, you, when you when you understand that you'll get uh, some bad comments anyway, maybe you you feel a bit more relaxed about that because uh, this is how yeah. it works. this is how it works. Uh, yeah, also for. But you look I'm, at people like Brad Traversy who are notoriously yeah. introverted who have never done a. I don't know if I've ever heard of him doing a conference or anything because I don't think that's something he likes. Um, he, I, I think he, he's an introverted person, but yet he's one of the biggest YouTube accounts teaching people all the time because there's a little bit more comfort of talking to the camera as those people as well yes. because you're not getting the instant booze. <laughs> you know, they're, yeah. they're not screaming at you until afterwards, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah, it's strange. I, yeah, I still, uh, I'm planning to do one of this live I don't know, yeah, maybe in the future. For now, for this is quite enough for me. <laughs> Trust me, for this is quite enough. But yeah, still, uh, we, we will see. We will see how they will go. Uh, yeah, so thank you, because this was really amazing. The, the, part, of, the part of when you say that you transformed by drinking beer and you got uh, to get the jobs, uh, <laughs> it's really <laughs> something. Oh, yeah, really, really helping stereotypes here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so looking forward for some something, we can make something together if you want. Yeah, I'll uh, definitely yeah. be in touch with you to do a workshop yeah. shortly, so. Yeah, and, and uh, I also noticed that, that uh, after I do something of these videos, uh, I talk with those people in maybe a different way. We are maybe more, a lot of more confi comfort confident from each other. So yeah. I'm waiting for that. And uh, thank you again because it has been a very, very good talk. Uh, a good way yeah, to- Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been yeah, great. Yeah, a good, way to, a good way to wake up for me also. So Yeah, for sure. As I yeah. said, like, it's good getting my first coffee in, having a conversation. Yeah. This is a, definitely the, yeah. the strangest way I've woken up in the f past few months, but <laughs> it's been really good. Yeah, and I'm jealous of your bird because it's, it's, a great, it's great. Your bird- The secret's bird. not shaving, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So looking forward, I don't know if maybe we will do something. I know this is an episode too, maybe in the future, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, anytime. So, you yeah. can hit me anytime. I'll be happy uh, to help anytime. Yeah. Let's keep in touch. Thank you again. Uh, and I hope to, uh, and when this situation will end, please uh, visit Ireland because uh, it's very, it's very good. And please subscribe to, to his channel which is growing and is, is really great. Uh, also follow him on Twitter. I don't know if you have any, do you use any other socials? Maybe? Uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, mm -hmm. Dev, Medium, wherever. I've, it's okay. Niall Jomar everywhere, basically. Nice, nice. Okay, yeah. Then we put them some links in the description so you can find him and follow him because uh, it's really worth. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Great. Uh, it was brilliant. Thanks a million. Yeah. See you next time. Bye. See you after.